a lot in the party's general election campaigns. It's how we pay for social care, right? It's the political elephant in the room. Politicians from all sides know something has to be done. But finding the solution remains or seems to remain elusive. And here's why reaching a long-term agreement is so urgent. In 2022-23, local authorities in England spent £20.5 billion pounds on adult social care. So what is the best way forward? Well, our reporter Tom Walker has been speaking to staff and residents at a block of apartments in South Liverpool, which are run by the charity Community Integrated Care. They provide 24-7 social care for people who have a mental health diagnosis. So we're here in our communal garden at Arundel Apartments. So um, now that the weather's getting nicer, this is a lot of the time spent by the people supported here. This is Anthony Caswell, who manages the team that supports the residents who live in the apartments. So Arundel Apartments is a service that's supports people with mental health diagnosis. Um, we have a vast range from 18 up into um, early 60s. So we support people that have been um, within the care sector, um, leaving care, becoming into the adult services, which it can be quite challenging to be at 18 told that you have to be living now independently. So we, we, we support all of them kinds of development of life skills. We also do um, support the people here in regards of their, their, their diagnosis, hospital appointments, GP appointments, Emotional support, um, also again in regards of developing life skills, jobs, um, education, vocational, aspirational outcomes. The work Anthony and his team do is often complicated and emotionally demanding, a point fully appreciated by his manager, Salma Kiaratu. She says the financial rewards Anthony and the team receive should be much better. I would say the biggest challenge is recognising our colleagues um, and ensuring that they are being paid fairly. Um, and this is actually recognised as a career and a skilled job. Um, I think the biggest challenge is actually recruiting and retaining uh, and ensuring that we have skilled employees who are able to provide the support for the people that we support here. Consistency, uh, continuity is key to ensure the people's lives or, or they live the best life possible. So by doing so, by rewarding them, I think that that's the only way forward. Hi Maureen, it's Tom. How are Maureen you? Evans is one of the residents who receives support from Anthony and his team. When she invites me into her bright and airy apartment, it isn't long before she starts to tell me about what needs to be done differently to improve the lives of disabled people like her. Make things like better for people with disabilities because they just seem to be get left left behind because the stays towards people with like disabilities throughout the country is really, really bad. So those are Maureen's views, but what are the wider problems faced by community integrated care? Jim Kane is the charity's chief executive and he says it all boils down to money. The sector is uh, is not well funded. Um, it's always a poor relation to our big sister, the health service. Um, although we are you know, intrinsically linked, um, we succeed and fail together. Um, but it's all about funding, which leads to problems with recruitment and retention, with training, with investment in innovation, doing things differently, um, but ultimately money. So let's just imagine you have the ear of the next Prime Minister who Whoever that might be, what would you say to him? What does he need to know and do? So the first thing I'd say is social care is all about people. So it's the people who are supported, but it's the people who are delivering care. And we need to recognise those people properly. So the difference between somebody working in social care and somebody working in the, in, a, in the NHS doing exactly the same job, there's a pay disparity of about 36%, which is over £7,000 a year. That isn't acceptable. They are equally skilled roles. And social care needs the recognition and the investment so that people see it as a place to work, as a place to pursue careers. And then I think over the next couple of years, that conversation can then deliver a proper workforce plan that recognises all the training, all the skills, capabilities that people within social care need and put it on a really sound footing, which gets us where we need to be, which is on the same footing as the NHS. So have you got any, any plans for new recipes today, Maureen? Um, I want a member of staff to come down and do a, um, a recipe online. And what about in the evening and the weekends? Are you guys around as well? We are 24 hours, 7 days a week support. So access can be, it can be tapped into at any time. It sounds quite intensive. It, it is intensive due to the fact that you're dealing with people's lives. You're, you're helping them support 
to make decisions and also help them through emotional crises as well. And you have to remain to be calm and collected through them times. If the future Prime Minister isn't listening to you and ignores what you've <laughs> just said, what are the likely consequences? The, the consequences are absolutely devastating. So the, the, the financial failure of social care is currently baked into the system. It's, it's a mathematical fact that if commissioning continues the way it is and funding continues the way it is, the sector will start to fail. Um, and that's not just us as a charity saying that. You know, the CQC, the independent regulator, are saying the same thing. So that in itself is pretty scary. But actually, when you meet the people who rely on social care, it becomes really scary because these are individuals with wants and dreams who are going to have their support taken away ultimately. Uh, thanks to Tom Walker there, uh, speaking to staff and residents at a block of apartments in South Liverpool, which are run by the charity Community Integrated Care. They provide, as you've been listening there, 24-7 social care 